So well, when, you should have never got the first punch because so the she, moment I got you in that corner. That's so yeah, it. it's like Mark. If I'm fighting somebody, I'm gonna stay and punch them until they, like, until yeah, until yeah, I'm yeah, done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody on set. Action. What's up, Cherry Bombs? On today's video, we're gonna be answering some questions that you guys have been asking. You guys asked some questions for me and Mark, and we finally got him here on the channel, finally. So we're gonna go ahead and answer those questions. And I just wanted to tell y'all, the fragrance content is coming, okay? You wanna introduce yourself? Hey guys, my name is Mark. I am her husband. So the first question is from Latanya. You guys know Latanya, I met her. I was able to give her um, a giveaway in person. So hmm. she asked our first question, do you guys ever disagree on who smells better? So basically what that question is, do we, whenever we put on a fragrance, do we argue and say, oh, I smell better today? Or do you say you smell better? No, that never happened because she picks out my scent. She picks out my, um, what she thinks would be good on me that day. And I'm always asking her, babe, what you think I should wear? So no, we never disagree on, not disagree, we never, um, how, what was it? Yeah, we never disagree on who smells better. Yeah, we never disagree on who smells better. No back to back. She obviously smells way better than me because she knows her scent, so. I will say that um, sometimes I will tell him like, yeah, no, my layering combo today slapped and he'll be like, yeah, his layering combo slapped too. And um, but you do we dis it. not all the time. I mean, they watch the vlogs, they be seeing that you be picking out some of your fragrances too. So like, not, I do pick out his fragrances, but not all the time, unless he asks me, but you guys know how men are. They just pretend like they can't do anything so that way you can do more. What? So, yes, that's what y'all do. No, we do not. Yes, if you could have me tie your shoes, you would. Because? Because y'all don't want to do it. So y'all be like, no. y'all sweet talk us and make it seem like we, y'all can't do it just so we can do it. Cause y'all don't want to do it, y'all too lazy. You're a perfectionist. So you like your things perfect. So meaning when you give me something to wear, I know it's perfect because I just, yeah, just because. <laughs> yeah, but nah, we don't disagree. <laughs> we don't because I mean, I like everything in my collection. Of course, I like some more than the other, but when we're wearing a fragrance, we never really disagree on who smells better. Yeah. I'll probably say like, hey, my layering combo slapped and he'll say his slapped too, but disagree and like really getting mad no, never. The second question is by Shayvon. What are some ways you serve each other? How do you navigate through disagreements? We agree to disagree. Um, most of the time, if we really cannot agree, because sometimes even if you say, okay, let's agree to disagree, some people don't agree. Like they have, there has to be a right, there has to be a wrong. For me, I don't mind disagreeing, agreeing to disagreeing, but if it reached to that point where we cannot agree, we just walk away. For example, the paintings we were picking at the store. Oh, the um, the artwork, wall art. I think it, I think we just walk away from each other. I think we're two couple that are pretty much the same in a way. Uh, we both do really disagree on some stuff, and then you know after that we're like, and it's funny later I'll be like, "You were right, baby." She's like, "No, you were right." I'm like, "Wait." Now we're disagreeing on who's, who's wrong and right. <laughs> no, who was right. Not wrong, who was right. Who was right? They're like, okay, fine, you was right. And she's like, no, you were right. I'm like, okay, whatever. We, we just keep it moving. And then we just keep it moving. Like, That's sometimes it. we just don't even... Sometimes there isn't a disagreement or an agreement. Like, we just, just let it go. Like, we don't even ponder on it too much. And it's not that deep. The third question is, how was it adjusting from single to married life? Living together, sharing your space, keeping each other in mind while making decisions. How was it adjusting from single life to married life for you? Um, and then I'll answer. It wasn't much, not, nothing much of an adjustment because when we moved in together, we pretty much clicked in because we moved in before marriage, right? Um, we, of course, uh, <laughs> we pretty much clicked in. We became basically one. We just wasn't married. So when we got married, it's not like there was much that we had to do so it's just basically, hey, yeah, we're already here. Let's continue living. And we're still happy till this day. Yeah, for me, um, the adjustment for from single life to married life 
was not too hard, but it was a little different for me speaking from my point of view because yeah, we were single, so I couldn't leave at any time I want. But when you're married, you have obligations. And um, Mark used to be like, ah, I put a ring on it. And just as a joke. But at the same time, like, it was nothing serious. Like, no arguments. We would just be talking, like, you know. And he'd be like, oh, I put a ring on it now. But when you think <laughs> about it, <laughs> but when you think about it, like, yeah, there's a ring on it now. Okay? So, like, you can't just walk out. You can't just leave. And I wasn't like that in the um, single life. I'm very committed. I'm very loyal to whatever I put my mind to. So to me, it wasn't really different. It was just one of those things where you're like, okay, yeah, now is this what I really want to do? And obviously, yeah, we did it because we're married. And, um, it's It wasn't a big adjustment because we were living together before marriage. And honestly, it wasn't an adjustment. It was actually very smooth for us. Um, another thing too, we kind of knew what we wanted. Um, I knew she was going to be my wife one day and she also knew which I'm hoping that I was going to be her husband so I didn't know you didn't know I was going to be your husband no well I had that in mind I knew what I wanted let me tell you why I didn't know we never women never knows we know we want to be married but we never know if the guy's serious okay well I knew what because I, go ahead. no no because I'm, I'm being honest because men don't show it until they actually show it women show that they are in there and sometimes that's a good thing sometimes it's a bad thing because if you're showing that you're in there for um for life and you're doing the wifely duties he's not gonna wife you sometimes men on the other hand you don't know where they're at until they show you where they're at because they don't spend the whole time showing you where they're at if that makes sense so yeah you knew that you wanted to marry me but i didn't know how did i know like your words was true because men out there are always using their words just to get into your pants. So honestly, I did have some uncertainties that you really wanted to marry me until you got on your knees and you said, yeah. I don't think it takes that long for a guy to know if a woman is worth being their wife or if a woman, like, I don't think, it, how would I say it? I don't think a guy. A guy knows. Yeah, I don't think it takes. I don't think it take that long for a guy to know if a woman's gonna be their wife or not. It don't. It's, but it's like, men like to waste people time. Uh, that's true. Majority. But that's where that's where maturity kicks in. Yeah. So majority likes to waste people time. And to be honest with you guys, like I said, I wasn't sure, but I knew I wanted him to be my husband. I wasn't sure that he wanted me. Yeah, he was saying it, but. Like I said, like a man can be living a double life for years and you never know it. So when he got on his knees and he said, will you be my wife? Like the tears came out because I was finally certain. Not because I th loved him, because he knew that I loved him. But the tears came out because I'm like, yes, oh my God, he really does want to marry me. Because men don't sit there every day. I want to marry you. I want to marry you. And even if they do, it could just be for an alternative um, goal. So... Um, yeah, dang, that one was, that one I, hit, hit I knew deep. what I wanted and I got it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. And another thing, like we both knew what we wanted and I'm happy. I finally see that what you wanted or, or what you was telling me that you wanted is what you actually wanted, which was me. Okay. The second part of this question is sharing our space. For me, I'm going to go ahead and answer that first. For me, sharing my space was really hard because I have four brothers and I'm the only girl. So I never really had to share anything. Obviously, we shared a house, but I didn't have to share a room. I didn't have to share anything. And I was I was always by myself. Like, they they were friends, and I was by myself. So sharing space with Mark, honestly, I liked it in the beginning. And then in the middle, when it started to settle in, I was like, okay, I really got to share a bathroom with him. I got to share a bed with him. I got to share all of this with him. Is this what I really wanted? And when I realized that Mark was very much his own person as well, and um, he was not, he is clingy but he's not clingy if that makes sense like he loves to be you know he's he, he loves the affectionate and he'll be on me but sometimes like most of the time he'll give me my space and I love that so for me sharing the space was not an issue at all because he gave me the space that I needed to still feel like okay I have my own space even though we're sharing I know that was a lot um I'm a pretty easy guy Easy going. Nothing really bothers me, <laughs> as you guys. Maybe she knows that. Nothing really bothers me. So 
if I have my space, great. If I don't have any space, whatever, I'll make the best of it. Um, I'm one of those person that believes in whatever situation that you are in, you make the best of it. Um, even if she wants me to give her space, I'll be glad to. But at the same time, there's time to be clingy. There's time for that. Like, you're my wife. <laughs> you're my wife. I I'm going to annoy you. And that he does. And the last part of that question is keeping each other in mind when making decisions. I think I should answer that. Because honestly, telling you, making decisions, I think that I trust you enough. Even before that, I always trusted you to make the right decision. If there's that also brings trust in the relationship, that plays a big part. If I make a decision, I, I would expect for her to trust me. If she makes a decision, she would expect for me to trust her because they I don't think she would make the wrong decision. She would only make a decision that is right for both of us. Whatever she decided to do would be, for, for, would make both of us happy. And it's the same way with me. Whatever decision that I make, um, of course I would still run it by her and she would still run it by me too. But I definitely trust any decision that my wife make and she trusts any decision that I make. And then even if it happens before, I didn't get the chance to tell her. When I tell her, she'll be like, she'll be like eh, okay, no problem. Or if something is off, she'll be like, I'd probably do this better. And it's the same way for me. Yeah, so I guess um, keeping each other in mind. Yeah, we do keep each other in mind. It's always going to be. But sometimes if you're talking about like um, going to him and asking him first, we don't have to do that, it's not that unless it's something that needs your approval or my approval so yeah but we know it we know what's a need what's needs for an approval and what don't needs it not everything needs my approval the other person's yeah the significant others approval. approval so how important is it to be on the same page when it comes to faith in god when did both of you know that the other person was the one so let's start with the first question um, how important is it to be on the same page when it comes to faith in God? Oh, that's an easy one. I invited her to my gospel band. That means we were already in it before yeah. each other and we came together and we click. Yeah. That's we click. We go to church. We go to church together. We pray together. Even though I believe that I'm the prayer warrior in this relationship. Definitely. I'm not oh. gonna lie. He, defi <laughs> he definitely is. He is a prayer warrior, and I pray to be like him when I grow up. And yeah, I'm not scared of no devil. Devil, you going down. You going down. I got my anointing oil over here. And I'm literally like this behind him. <laughs> yeah, devil, you going down. I got my anointing yeah, oil. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I got my anointing oil. Whenever it gets down to that, whatever sickness, um, whatever it may be, hey, I I'm going into prayer mode. Trust me, I, I'm scary when I'm in prayer mode. You don't play with that. Don't play with it. By the grace of God. Period. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, when it came to our faith, that literally was what brought us together. Like, he needed somebody to sing in his gospel band, and I was one of the options. And then when I came, like, there was no other competition, baby. Okay. <laughs> and then we didn't even, <laughs> we were friends. So, um, yeah, and then the other part of the question is, um, when did both of you know that the other person was the one? Um, I'll answer that and you can answer yours. I, I knew when you was the one when I wanted to give it quits and you said, why? The who? Give quits. Like I wanted to give up on the relationship and you said, why? For what? Remember when we was in the parking lot at Publix behind the chase and oh. it was, yeah. And you was like, for what though? It's not that serious. And then I took a step back and I'm like, really? It really wasn't that serious. The argument was not that serious for us to just give up. And when I seen that he didn't want to break up, because I'm so used to like cutting people off, not people, relationships off. And I haven't been in that much relationships. <laughs> but like even like from the, I nip it in the butt even before it becomes a relationship. Because if I see like something that doesn't work out or you're not even trying, um, yeah, and I purpose. I know women purposely would sit there and try to break up just to see if he will fight for her. But honestly, y'all, I was ready to skedaddle. I was so ready to skedaddle. And he said, 
for what? Like, this is not that serious. We can work this out. And um, that's when I knew, like, yeah, I need somebody that's going to fight for me. And I never used, like, breaking up ever again. <laughs> ever. Like, I never brung it up, and he never brung it up, and we're still here. Because it's not, it wasn't about breaking up. It was more than, like, okay, like, if we can't agree, we got to cut it off because I'm not going to fight back and forth and he realized and he took it and he was like no like it doesn't have to be a fight it can be a discussion and that was the first guy that actually for me said that and that's how i knew you was the one obviously the kisses was good and the other stuff was good too so that was a plus <laughs> <laughs> how did i know she was the one how did i know she was the one when she cooked me that first meal and really? it was good really <laughs> I'm like, let me go ahead and lock it in right now with my phone at roller coaster. You ready to ride it? Um, forever. I can't. Sin. <laughs> and she said yes. And that. But um, seriously, um, I knew she was the one from. Let me let me explain this to you. It's it's a short story. Um, from the get go, I never I didn't see her like that. I, if she was just an in, in, invite, how, how you say it? You just invited me to the band. I just invited her to the band just as a normal person. I didn't have no feelings for her at the time. I didn't even think about even doing some of those crazy stuff that we're doing now with her right now. Because she was just a normal person, another person. Um, when I invited her, we didn't have no feeling. And then, it honestly, it kicks in naturally because I didn't think she was my type, to be honest. It kicks in naturally. And as I got to know her and I got to see the person that she was and there was things that was so different from my past relationships. And I'm like, you know what? This girl, she has a kind heart. Um, not only just a kind heart, um, she has the fear of God in her. She's a woman of God. She feared God. And I'm like, you know what? Let me let me give it a try. And then everything just start work going into place. And of course I prayed. I even prayed. I'm like, God, if if I'm catching feelings for this young lady, if she's not the one for me, take her out of my life. And trust me, God, when you pray on something, it happens. Especially when you pray with pray with all your heart. <laughs> I'm like, God, take her out of my life. Whatever argument that we have, just end it right there. And then confirmation was my family loved her. Other people loved her. Everyone kept saying, that's your lady, that's your girl. And we just compliment each other and we click and look out. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> and we click and yeah, it, it's God's work. It's God's work and God's still working on us. And yeah, of course we are we not got, perfect at we, all. We got many more years to come. And to piggyback off of what he said, um, like he said that I was not his type. Same thing for me too. Like I had a whole list y'all. It had to be dark, tall and chocolate. I'm five, eight. So you had to be six foot and up. But, um, I realized that all of those people that was on my list were not really people that I wanted to be with. And I realized that. So when I throw away the list and I prayed to God, I said, God, I just want the next person that I'm coming to that that's going to be in a relationship with me to be my husband. And I want it to happen naturally because I knew Satan was going to be like, okay, the next person that asks for a relationship will be your husband. So I strategically prayed for that. And to be honest with you guys, I don't even know when we fell for each other. It just naturally happened. It just naturally happened. Like it was today we were friends, tomorrow we were catching feelings. So he really wasn't my type. Obviously, let's just be, let's just be clear. Physically, I am attracted to him. He is handsome. Okay, and I'm, I hope I'm, you're attracted to me too. Trust me, girl. <laughs> Trust me, girl. Trust uh, me. Okay, Trust so like, um, it's one of those things. Like, it just naturally happened. And um, we met in the band, and we naturally fell for each other, and that was that. And another thing, I knew she was mine when I hit that one break and she did it. I was like, yes. The next question is, what are some goals of yours? So um, what are some of your goals, obviously, um, that you don't mind sharing? Not things that you want to share, but, I mean, um, you know. Goals for 
in the future or just 2024? 20, 20, yeah, what are some of your goals for 2024? Uh, right now, I won't share much it's to get closer to God. Okay. Because without Him, we're absolutely nothing. Yep. And I want to be under God's arm. When yeah. I tell you close, close. Because nowadays, the way the world is going, everything is upside down. And there is no better comforter than being... Comforter? There is no better comforter than being under God's arm. Yeah. And you feel safe. You feel like you have someone to rely on. And actually, that's that's the goal for me and her, for us to get closer and to continue to walk that path. Yeah. That's Same it. here. Like for me, one of my goals, obviously, um, that I can share because you guys are currently here. I want to reach to 100K by my birthday. Um, which is in June. And then, of course, the biggest goal is to get closer to God because with God, everything is possible. So if you're closer to him, the closer you are to him, I've, I know the closer the devil is trying to get to you too. But at the same time, the closer I am to him, I am stronger. So I will accomplish everything with him on my side. So we pretty much have the same goals um, if that's what you was asking. We had to switch real quick because Mark leg kept dying. So he needs some support. <laughs> you know, he's 35 now. So he need that support. It's okay, Grandpa. How do you and Mark balance content creation, his job, church, while still making time for each other? And I want to add on to that. How do we balance the band? And um, do you want to go first? You go ahead. Okay. So I create content 24-7. Um, church. And uh, his job, he works mostly, what do you work, five days a week. And most of the time he's working either mid-shift or morning shift. So after he gets off of work and um, we take some time to each other, for each other. We don't really have like a schedule. We're just getting in when we can get it in. So whether it's um, going out on dates, because you guys see that on the vlog, that's when we spend our time together because sometimes I'll be editing, he'll be playing the game. So, and I think it works for us because when he's playing the game or when he's watching his games, um, that gives me time to work on my craft because he is not a needy husband. The only thing that I feel like that helps me with my creating content, because creating content is time consuming. It's like having a child. Um, is because he's not needy. He's He can take care of himself. If he's really um, hungry, he'll just grab a bowl of cereal instead of, you know, making me cook a five-course meal. Like some <laughs> husbands, they will not eat outside. They will not eat anything besides your food. And obviously, Mark always tell me that my food is the best, obviously. So, but he still doesn't have an issue eating outside because... He understands the vision and that's the thing that helps us the most because he understands the vision. When it comes to balance, I'm, child, there is no balance. Today, he could have me for like three hours. Tomorrow, he could only see me for 10 seconds. So there's not really a balance, but it works for us. Our, the way we do it, it just works, I guess. It's just um, overall, it's just understanding each other. Yeah. Understanding that she has a job to do. Understanding that I have a job to do. And, you know, do whatever that we can to accommodate, they go to work, to accommodate to, to each other. We can understand that, hey, we're not always going to spend the whole day together. There's thing that needs to get done. And, hey, that's working toward our future. Work hard now and enjoy it later. Yeah. And man. we do enjoy it now. Trust me. Yeah, we do. Whenever we, we're foodies. So whenever we have time to eat, we're going to eat, baby. So, uh, look. Okay, so, and then of course with God and church like that, because we're part of the band, we do have time for God. Each other. And too. each other too, yeah. So we spend a lot of time with each other, but even when we do spend a lot of time with each other, it's not a lot of time spending with each other. It's a lot of time spending around each other. But when we do have our time that we're really dialing it in, we take advantage of it. True. Okay, so the next one says, Smooches, Abby, I would like to see the two of you on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> y'all, I would love to, but Mark is not a YouTube type of person. Uh, um, y'all already know. He's not that. He's not. He'll no. show up maybe once a month. He's not going to be here all the time. I promise y'all. 
Mark just be in his feeling. He just be like, ah, I'm tired. I, I don't want to feel. I just feel like I'm awkward. I'm an awkward person. Even now, I'm a little awkward. I don't know why, but I'm awkward. Um, maybe one day, um, starting off like this, one, maybe one day, you never know. If you guys want to see it, I'll be down for it. Whatever, anything for you guys. Mm -hmm. And then she said, I think that sharing your passion and involving your husband in your endeavor, 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 endeavors, Endeavors. Endeavors. I can never say that word right. Endeavors is a beautiful thing. Yeah, um, we're going to be filming a video where he's rating some of my favorite fragrances. Um, and they're my favorites. And he's going to tell us how he really feel about them. So it's one of those things um, that we are working on. But when our schedule do it, then we're going to do it. So, yeah, we're going to I'm gonna incorporate him. Even if it's one time a month, I will definitely incorporate him if he's down. Until we become a thing. You just never know. You never know. Okay, so what is your favorite pastime activity? What do we like to do to pass time? I'm pretty much a homebody. <laughs> Not pretty much. I'm a homebody. Being the fact that, you know, with her past, she's mainly worked at home. Um, with that home job she has, her working at home, she gets tired of being in the house. But in the other side, I work outside. I work away from the house, so I get tired of going out. But at the same time, I do understand and try to accommodate again with um, with her needs. Um, she, and she do understand me too. When we got to be home, we're home doing little, nothing. little to nothing sometimes. Little to nothing, just bothering each other, being annoying to each other, um, which that grows on us. And then we have little dates we create. And then, of course, I accommodate by agreeing, hey, let's go out to eat, let's go to a theme park, let's go to a movie. We haven't been to a movie in a minute. I know. I need some popcorn. Um, music. We I, I was waiting for I was music. about to say, I was waiting for you to say music. <laughs> Our favorite pastime outside of eating and going out on dates or doing in-home dates is music. We music. sing in a band, you guys. We sing in a band. We're excited. And I you. am a homebody as well. I'm starting to become a homebody, even though whenever I am working at home, I want to get out. But it's only for like two seconds, y'all. I promise y'all nowadays, if I go outside, I'm just tired. I want to go back <laughs> home. And he just be like, I thought you wanted to hang. You getting old. I am. Yeah. So it's music. Um, we love going out with the band. Yep. That's our favorite pastime. The next one is, what is your favorite memory together? What's your favorite memory? And then I'll share mine. Ooh, there's a lot. What was your favorite? There's a lot. I gotta pick one. You go ahead. I'm thinking about one too. So, um, we'll come back to that because <laughs> there's so much. First time that I'm really like, catching feeling for her. That we went to church to each other. It was a Thanksgiving. We went to church to each other. Stop it. We okay, went to church ahead. with each other. <laughs> And the band was also performing. It was, I think it was on Thanksgiving or before Thanksgiving, right? I don't know. I don't know the memory that you're telling me. I think me. it was before Thanksgiving. We was going to play at a SDA church. I think Thanksgiving was the next Thursday. Yeah. We went to play at a SDA church. And then her shoe was untied. And somehow I got on my knees and was tying the shoe. She don't know that was a good memory. That's something... And then that's when I realized, like, what am I doing? Why am I on my knees tying this girl's shoe? And I also think that's probably when we fell for each other, too. That was the day when we was you was flirting with me. Yes, and I tied her shoe, and she loved it. And, yeah, and here we are. And then um, that day after that, we went to a friend's house, and <laughs> the whole time he was just giving me googly eyes whenever he can catch me. Um when no one's looking, he was just sending me texts. He's like, you're pretty today. And I was just like... Let me give another one. Thanks. You have another one? Go ahead. Since there's so much, um, we went to SeaWorld for the first time. Okay. Not even SeaWorld. We went to... we How we used to go eat at... <laughs> we were so lame. Yeah, we were. We used to be at the buffet every Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that's what we could afford, y'all. We was at the buffet, baby. And I, look, that's why I went, <laughs> That's why with these girls talking about these lists, like, oh, on a first date, they won't do this, they won't do that. Child, we couldn't even afford to do Cheesecake Factory, okay? Mm. But God definitely 
took us out of that situation. And then when we got our first apartment, there's so much. Like, there's just so, so much. So much memories that we just can't. Like, okay, so since you can't think of one. Well, he did think of one, but um, my favorite memory of Mark. It's not good. Thank you. No, it's not me. It's the candle. I didn't spray anything on. It's the candle behind us. Oh, that candle smells good. This one over there. Yeah, sniff. But, um, okay. So, my favorite memory of me and Mark is uh, when we were about to get married. <laughs> Obviously, we're married now, right? But I told him, we're not having sex at all. And our faith, and we lived with each other. And we definitely did not do it. Good job. He was, he was not with it. But I said, can we just be celibate for the whole time that we're planning the wedding? He said, sure, no problem. I don't think he understood how hard it was going to be. And um, my favorite memory was when we was laying on the bed we was trying so hard not to touch each other each other and um we hugged and he was just like please i was like nope i was like oh i want to too but nope so here's the part um that really like touched me is when he was like i just can't he was like, okay cool so he was just touching my hair and we we're just watching tv and he was like man i can't wait to say i do and that was my favorite memory Mm. Yeah. Not cool. because he wanted to say I do to have sex, but it was just like he, at that point, that the feelings went away. We was watching TV. And he was just, he hugged me, pulled me in. He was like, I just can't wait to say I do to you. And um, when I was walking down the aisle, your eyes, I don't think you've ever looked at me like that. I did not cry. Goals. Yeah, I didn't want you to cry. Like, I just feel like, yeah, I'm ha I, I think I think it was so beautiful. Every single time I see someone cry, specifically the man. But I don't care. I know, I know, I know who he is. Like, he was not going to do that. And I'm, I'm happy that he didn't cry. And I didn't cry, too, until the end of the um, wedding. I didn't cry. I think so, we're so goofy with each other. Yeah, yeah we were just like, we're not like that. Like, I would have laughed at you if you started crying. <laughs> like, you know, like, if Mark started crying while I was walking out the stage, I would have bust out laughing. I'd give you a neck. Neck! Yeah, I would literally just die. So, yeah, that was one of my favorite memories of you. So, let's go to the next question. I'm not done. Okay, Mark's... Okay, go ahead. more that came up. My favorite... My favorite memory was when we went to the park. That's also around the time... Remember when we went to Barnett Park? Yeah. Um, with our little... Dang, there's so many dates. But <laughs> we went to Barnett Park for the first time. Right after church, we went to Publix, bought some stuff. Bought some and we fixed chicken it up. and some sandwiches. We had a picnic. Publix tea. We literally sat there and ate just the two of us, which is so lame. Like, But it was just what yeah, we did. That's memory. And I was wearing the pink, the pink cardigan. With the black, I think that's the same picture you got where I did my. That was the same Sunday. <laughs> Show that picture. I'm gonna I'm I'm put up. I'm gonna insert that picture right here. <laughs> we was at church and he was busy texting me on his phone, and y'all just gonna see the picture. And he put his. He's a drummer, so he put his <laughs> drumstick on his forehead because he was so bored. The church was boring, y'all. And he was just texting. That. The church was, it was boring. Just not it. The church was boring. It was old Baptist church. Straight Baptist, like when you walk in there, it smelled like books. Oh no, it was um, it was church was not going on. They had like a meeting. They had like a meeting. You Mark, remember? It, no, it was church. And I was, was doing the, that. Yes, it was the preaching because you was all the way in the back, and I had walked in late. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I walked in late, so obviously I was in the back too. So yeah, but um, I'll show you that picture. But yeah, that was the same day. <laughs> um, so let's move on to the next question. What? It's been your favorite date night experience so far. Our favorite date night ha! so far. Like the best date night. Go ahead. The best date night was so far that I can think of is Bahama Breeze for the first time with me and you. When you wear that little black dress. That was our first expensive restaurant. To us, it was expensive at the time. Yeah. I think it was for what? Your birthday? Yep. Was it your birthday or Valentine's Day? It was my birthday. No, it was our anniversary. Our our one year anniversary. Oh my gosh. I remember because every anniversary it shows that picture. <laughs> yeah. Facebook and shares I, it. And I decided to take her to Bahama Breeze. Not 
wedding anniversary, but no, our um dating anniversary, which we still celebrate every October. That's why we go to Miami. But go ahead. Yeah, and it was that's that was a good memory. We went to eat our first expensive restaurant, and she was so shocked, like, you got money for this? <laughs> yep. But she understood me. I understood her, and we had a blast. We ordered some drinks. She had a the little pineapple thing. Yep. I forgot the name of it. It's the pina colada with the whole pineapple. The with the whole one. pineapple, and I'm like, expensive. Like, good <laughs> lord. Like, <laughs> Uh, okay, we're going to wash dishes after. <laughs> but she enjoyed it. And you can see in her face that she enjoyed it, that she enjoyed that time. And I was like, oh, wow. You did great for yourself. <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> he said, yes. Yeah, that was a good first date. Or, um, or your favorite date. I like that date. You. My favorite date was. Your turn. Um, your turn. My favorite date was the picnic. That was the picnic, yeah. Mm. When we um we had no money, but we still made it. nothing out of something. Yeah, so something we went, out of nothing. Something out of nothing, and we got us some chicken with some sandwiches. We didn't even get like the sandwiches that you make at the deli. We got regular sandwiches because the, we didn't have the money. The cold ones. The cold ones at the um the deli freezer, and we bought some chips and we bought some fridge. Yeah, the, the fridge. Freezer. Oh, yeah, fridge. And we bought some chips, and we sat there the whole afternoon, and we ate. Oh, remember that date we had when uh, we went to Okoye, Oko, right? The park all the way in Okoye, when they had all the little, well, it's not maggots, gnats, the gnats. Bro. When they had all the gnats, and we had a little towel on the floor, it was just swapping away. It was so ghetto. <laughs> and I was like, babe, I got the perfect spot for us. She was like, you do? And that was, I think that was our second date. We were just crazy. And I loved when we used to go to um, arcades. Ah. I love that. We need to get back to doing that. Yeah. I'm just tired of them taking my money. She's very competitive, y'all. She's very competitive. Don't She's not me. losing yeah. for nothing. And I'm not losing. If I'm not playing a game, just know that I'm just not that good at it. Because <laughs> I don't want to lose. When she finds something she's good at. Just like, like the fighting games? That, you cheated. How am I cheating? They gave me the ability to punch. Okay, y'all. Uh, fighting games, you're supposed to move around. Jump left, jump right, throw punches, throw kicks. But this girl right here, when she bought the game, we started playing together. She stayed, like, how she, she would spam that one button. That's all she did, the punching button. And I can't do nothing. So well, when, you should have never got the first punch. Because so the moment I got you in that corner, that's so yeah, it. it's like she would pull me through to the corner and just straight punches until the game is done, until she win. And you don't do it like that, Mark. If I'm fighting somebody, I'm gonna stay and punch them until they, like, hey, until hey, until hey, I'm hey, done. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. And she's like. <laughs> if I'm fighting somebody in real life, I'm gonna be punching you until I can't no more. And now nah, that was so that, that I was really fighting for real. In real life, you do all those kick moves and specials? Yes. No. So my Hadouken. <laughs> <laughs> so when you find somebody, you step back mm -hmm. and you do your little movement. I jump. <laughs> Look, you give me hiccups. And then you do that. Mm hmm Kick. And you press X and square and circle yep. to do a special. Yeah, but right before. Who, who has time? If he's in front of me, I'm like, give me a minute. X, Y, X, circle, square. And arrow button. <laughs> No. And I'll do a combo, a headbutt, <clears throat> a kick. All right, super. And then, and I don't just sit there and like, hiya, 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 hiya. It gets annoying. <laughs> That's why I stopped playing that game and I threw it away. Anywho, y'all, that was it for the questions. That's it? That's it. Oh, God, yeah, I wish you guys had more questions because I start getting into it at the end. That's what you always do. Juicy. But you know, I was cold now I'm warm wait yeah that's it guys um advice for you guys some of you guys that um that's thinking about dating someone that's getting ready to that's thinking about it or that has somebody talking to them um take your time to know who that person is don't just run and because don't just run and date that person because they look cute because they handsome because they got a nice body 
or if it's a girl because they got a nice butt nice titties no don't look at that and then don't be afraid to look outside of your list because the person you have in mind is not always the person that god has for you and then you realize that the person that you had in mind was definitely not for you and the person that god has for you is actually right in front of you is actually your type and they sometimes they be right in front of you yep. and girl Dang, I'm starting to be like you. I'm saying girls now. Well, because we are talking to my girls. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> yeah, feel free to date outside of your list because there are some great guys out there. And guys, there are some great females out there. All of them is not the H word um, or the B word. There are some good ones out there just wants love. And there are good guys out there that just wants love. You just have to be patient, even if it takes you a year. And yes, we did take a whole, we were talking for a whole year. I was not having that. Before we started dating a whole year, did I try to get in her pants? Yes. Did I try to get a kiss? Yes. But it took us a whole year. We, from 2013 to 2014, right? To 2014, October. We met actually October. We met October 12th and we started dating October 13, 2014. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. We met on October. We started dating in October, which. Not takes- the same October, the next October. It takes time. Take your time. No rush. And also, you ladies out there, there are some guys that are out there to get in your pants. There are some signs that you should be watching for. If the guy really wants you, he's going he's gonna to work on your time. He's going to wait till you are ready. Same thing for men's. Men's, there are some great females out there. All of them is not the H word. Yes. They probably was with the some other man or made some kind of mistake. It was maybe slept with some somebody. Some guys will put their name out there. It's not always that's not always the case. Some women just wants the love. That's all they want. So some women, most women, most yeah, most women wants the I, love. I think ninety nine point nine. The ones that don't want love is because they're tired of searching for it and not getting it, and they don't want it anymore. And if she can cooks, cooks, put it in a chokehold. Put it in a chokehold. Put her in a chokehold if she can cook. That's it. I can't. But thank you guys so much for joining me here yet again. If you guys want to see any videos with me and Mark in it, comment it down below. Until we see each other again. Bye, Cherry Bye, Bombs. Cherry Bombs.